As a travel writer, I've always felt there's something very special about the coast. Those places at the edge where the land and sea often collide in the most spectacular fashion. And for me, regardless of how much I travel the world, nowhere can quite compare with the east of England coastline. Now I'm back on a journey of discovery to find out how this remarkable land and seascape can be truly inspiring. Two years ago, I made a 3,000 mile journey around the English coast while researching one of my books, and I became totally captivated by the largely unsung Essex coastline. It seems only right, therefore, that we should begin our coastal inspirations odyssey at the handsome market town of Burnham on Crouch. A hundred years ago, Burnham was almost unheard of, and its only claim to fame was its oyster beds. Out on a limb at the end of a road, it's a town you have to decide to visit, as it's not somewhere you'll pass through en route to somewhere else. The pretty high street is a medley of handsome Georgian homes, white weatherboard fishermen's cottages, and an eccentric clock tower the pavement has to duck beneath. In 1889, the railways arrived and opened the town up. Yachting became the hub of the big social scene, and today it remains as popular as ever. So much so that Burnham-on-Crouch is often referred to as one of Britain's foremost yachting centres, the cows of the East Coast. It's home to literally hundreds of boats, with seemingly every mooring taken and the river an armada of white sails. The bustling town and busy quayside offer so much visual inspiration, it's no real surprise that Burnham has a thriving art scene. Sue Spears has been painting pastel and watercolour scenes in Burnham-on-Crouch for the past 26 years, and she's gamely agreed to take up the challenge to capture this wonderful river view for us today. I mean, I can see why you'd be inspired on a day like this, but what makes Burnham so special for you? I think it's the light. Uh, because it faces south, it always seems to be filled with light. It's always... It always seems to be sunny. It isn't, but it always seems to be sunny in my mind if I'm thinking about a painting. Um, because I like to paint sunshine, colour, light, especially light on the water. Um, that's why I love it so much. The view Sue's painting for us includes one of Burnham's most iconic buildings, the award-winning clubhouse of the Royal Corinthian Yacht Club. Designed by Joseph Emberton in the 1930s, its avant-garde design was pretty controversial at the time. Club member Tim Matthews is a real fan and has been looking after this very special building for the past 25 years. Certainly in the 1930s it was very unusual for a sailing and yachting club to commission their own building. On the left here you've got the old clubhouse where the Royal really? Corinthian Yacht Club was. The old Weatherboard one. Absolutely. Is it? They, they were there for a number of years but in 1930 they decided that now was the time to commission a very important architect, Joseph Emberton. And at that time he was really the Richard Rogers of the day. So it was really a radical design wasn't it back then? It was a radical design and a radical concept. Unlike most of other buildings and even towns around the, the Essex coastline, they all nestled behind the sea defences. The architect, Joseph Emberton here, decided that one of the most important things was to step over the seawall and to become part of the river scene. So it's a bit like an ocean liner, isn't it? Certainly viewed in, from in here water. with the portholes at the bottom and the, uh, yeah. the rails. It's and this is a bit like a crow's nest on the right going up. Well, indeed, <laughs> again, it's very much part of Emberton's original design. The flag mast, the the, the signalling system for the racing was all part of the concept. I don't know whether he was a sailor, but he obviously understood his brief. So from the outside, certainly, you either love it or hate it. I mean, from the rear, it does look a bit like a municipal swimming pool, doesn't it? It does, but as soon as you walk in through the front door yeah. into the building, you see the glass and the river. Absolutely. The views from the clubhouse are indeed hard to beat.
There's a photo opportunity around every corner in Burnham and over the years many an amateur photographer has tried to capture the special atmosphere of this very quaint Essex market town. Henry Potton is curator of Burnham on Crouch Museum and he's helping to sort some pictures for me that chart the town's social history from its roots as a centre for the oyster trade right through to its current role as a leading yachting centre. So what have you picked out for us today, Henry? Well, the, these, are, these are oyster boats. Yeah, yeah. And Bulging nets. Absolutely, yes. Good yeah. days. Scraped off the mud. This is one of the last pictures of the oyster cruise, um, taken just before the Second World War. By then it was a very small concern. Here we've got, are these some of the other, a uh, lovely these, Georgian, yes. is these, that in the high street? This though? is in the high street, yeah. this is a house built by an oyster merchant family, 1848, the date is up there. None wow, of, look at that. Yes. This is taken during the 1897 floods, um, where the sea wall burst in several points and came right over the quay, and these buildings still stand. Then we come into the sailing period, yes. have you got yes. any? Yes, we've got quite a lot on that. Well, these are some lovely photographs. I mean, they're so atmospheric, aren't they? Yes, they are, yes. Um, very lively, too, a lot of them. They're mm. real works of art, yes. aren't they? Yeah. They really are. Hat-makers. What's wonderful about these is it really captures particular moments, doesn't it? Yes. You know, the guy just stepping yes. over. And That's right. It's a real moment yeah. frozen in time. Wonderful yeah. photographs. I'm off to meet woodcarver and artist Mike Barter, who's self-taught and particularly likes sculpting with wood and stone. Inspired by the coastline and marshes of Essex, he regularly collects driftwood while out walking to carve back at his workshop. So what are you working on today, Mike? Well, I've, I've started working on this piece. It's a piece that's been inspired by the coast. It's uh, the movie. Are these the waves then? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's the movement, the energy, and the way, the, way the, the coast makes you feel. It's not a directly rep representational piece, so it's, it's more about emotions, it's more about movement and energy. Is the coast then a really important part of your inspiration? I don't think there's anywhere else quite like it. You know, the, 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 the smell, the, the feeling, the, the assault on your senses, it's... it's uh, it's a good place to be, I think. And that's what you're trying to catch yeah. all in one piece. Yeah. There. Wow, looks like you've got other materials out here you've been working with. Yeah, yeah, there's all sorts, really. I mean, something like this, it, it just... That's great. I love his hair. Burnham on Crouch certainly has its fair share of literary associations. In his classic War of the Worlds, H.G. Wells uses the area as a setting for a major Martian invasion. And then there's Alfred Hitchcock. When he was being questioned about the inspiration for his chillingly atmospheric films, he too cited a visit to Burnham on Crouch. So the question would seem to be, would North by Northwest? and the birds have existed without Burnham on Crouch. Burnham has a long history of boat building. In fact, there are several shipwrights still working down by the quayside. And that's where I'm catching up with our next artist. This working environment is perfect for Tracy Saunders, who uses an unusual watercolour technique to portray man-made objects in her work. What are you working on today, then? I'm just putting down the preliminary sketches. It's interesting you work with so much going on. I mean, there's all this juxtaposition of boats and cranes and lines going on. Do you like that? It must be very challenging. Yeah, no, I enjoy that. I actually enjoy the challenge of having a complicated subject and I have to get it onto paper. Can you tell me a bit about the technique you're using? Yeah, sure. Once I 
get all the line work down in situation here while I'm sketching. Then I take that back to the studio. Um, I draw all the shapes up on my stretch piece of paper. Um, and then I mix, mix up all the individual colours, knowing exactly where I want to put them on the paper. And then I throw the, throw the paint at the paper. Because literally? Li literally throw it. <laughs> so there's this sort of explosion of colour on the paper. And it, it gets over the nervousness of a white sheet in front of you. How interesting. And then it lets the, uh, the watercolour do the hard work of mixing together. And I let that dry first. And then I go in with more detail.